Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving deep into part two of our custom scan body series. I suggest you get ready to elevate your digital design game as we are unlocking the secrets of creating an ExoCAD library from our previous work. Now it's time to bring our creation to life. If you haven't checked out part one yet, I highly suggest that you pause here, check out part one and join us back on this exciting journey. Believe me, you don't want to miss a single bite. I also wanted to express my heartfelt gratitude to all my Patreon supporters. Your steady support fuels the ongoing growth of the channel and I'm deeply grateful for every single one of you. In our previous video, we left off with our scan body a bit in a pickle, but fear not because today we are diving headfirst into the ExoCAD jungle to whip it into shape for our library. First up, it's mesh makeover time. We are fusing those upper and lower parts tighter than a pair of yoga pants and I recommend cranking up the accuracy and density settings to a solid 250 for a maximum oomph. Next on the agenda, hollowing our mesh like we are carving out a Halloween pumpkin. Aim for a wall thickness of 0.1 mm, just enough to keep the ghost out. Then, using the plane card tool, we are slicing off a slice of the lower mesh, leaving it open as a drive through at midnight. Now comes the fun part, cleanup duty. We are purging those unwanted mesh bits faster than a Marie Kondo enthusiast on a decluttering spray. Just double click, delayed and voila, you got a mesh cleaner than a grandma's kitchen after spring cleaning. Let's get meshing. Now that our mesh is pristine as a freshly washed Ferrari and as hollow as a politician's promises, it's time for the grand finale, exporting our masterpiece. Just click away from glory, we are saving it to our hard drive with a regular nickname Scan Flag Shell. Buckle up folks, we are about to take the shell for a joyride through the digital orbit. Alright adventurers, grab your maps and compasses because we are embarking on a quest to the ExoCAD implant library folder. Our treasure, the desktop scan flag and its trusty companion, the implant interface tailored for the glorious Noble BioCare active system. Prepare yourself for a journey filled with twists and turns, let's dive in. Alright folks, it's time for some digital housekeeping, but don't worry, we are making it fun. First up, we are copying and pasting our ScanFlex shell mesh into a freshly brewed folder. Say goodbye to the old ScanFlex as we delete them. Out with the old, in with the new. Now, before we dive into the config file, I highly recommend grabbing Notepad++. Trust me, it's like upgrading from a tricycle to a Ferrari. Inside the config file, it's time to play detective. Let's start by dressing up the display information name, we are giving a makeover. Now, we are on the hunt for the elusive marker file name, the golden ticket to customization. But beware, there are some sacred code segments that we cannot temper. The implant library entry sets the stage, while type config marks the beginning of our library system shenanigans. And because we are keeping it simple, we are bidding adieu to the second part of the implant type config and those pesky signature files. We are rewriting through it. Now let's take a look at the remaining subtype configuration section, which indicates the NP connection. Remember, we deleted the RP selection to show a cleaner process here. The implant subtype configuration section separates the file from non-engaging and engaging connection types. If you look at the support file names and enter the name on the desk web page, we can identify the tie-based connections. Here we can also specify between non-engaging and engaging connections. Now let's copy the new scan body name from our new file and enter it in the marker file section of the configuration file. Now is the perfect moment to hit the subscribe button and join our growing community. 
Under Exascoot channel, we can change the degree of angulation. I'm changing it to 20 degree because this is recommend maximum for modern milling machines. If you have a 5 axis high performance mill, we can also change it to 30 degree while that's pushing the boundaries. Now let's tackle the registration click center. Despite Exocad's effort in aligning the scan flag mesh, it seems the red dot for the registration center decided to play hide and seek. With the mesh mixer, let's shift our focus to the center point. I summoned an extra mesh here, my trusty assistant, if you so will. With the blue arrow acting as our guide in the z-axis, we are in for some horizontal movement fun. And oh boy, do those numbers love to dance. Moving vertical up and down, we are tweaking the y-axis like a pro. And don't even get me started on the x-axis, our sidekick in this messy adventure. With our idle position jotted down, it's time to charm the ExoCAD registration click center with those digits. Here's the kicker. ExoCAD and MeshMixer play a game of who's first with access names. But fear not, a simple tweak of numbers in the registration center will set things right. Now our red dot becomes a guiding star for our mesh alignment. Voila! Feeling daring? Take your library to new heights by venturing into the RP section or throw in some straight type -based sections for good measure. Because who says your library cannot have it all, right? Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a lot of fun for me to make it. A lot of the dialogues I made actually with ChatGPT, I wrote down my comments that I wanted to say in the voiceover and then I told ChatGPT to make it funny and professional and then I read it over the voiceover. If you like this content, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up. That will help the video, that helps the algorithm at YouTube. And I hope you are going to see you next week. Stay tuned.